The home of the recording industry is the logical place for AKA to be. He came into 2016 as the most played local artist on SA Radio, and we met him at a museum dedicated to the Grammys, the benchmark of musical success. He's just done a show in New York. Promoters want a US tour, and he's as cool as you like about it. There are a lot of music moments right here in the Grammy Museum, but was there a moment in your life where you knew music was something you had to do? I think I've always been a musically inclined person, even as a, as a young child. You know, I was that kid that, you know, had to dance for my grandparents, so I was a bit of a show off. You know, I think I still am. But consciously, I made the decision that, okay, this is something I want to do as early as the first year of high school. You know, I got together with my friends and we started making beats and rapping, whatever it is that 14 year olds uh, had to rap about. We were rapping about it. And do you have your a favorite Grammy moment? For me, it definitely has to be uh, Kanye West first Grammy. He said, everybody wants to know what I'm going to do if I, if I don't win. I guess we'll never know. You mentioned Kanye as one of your many inspirations. You're actually wearing one of his hats right now. What do you love most about him? I just love, uh, you know, how brave he is, how uh, unapologetic he is. I really like that about his craft and his music. He takes it very seriously. You know, it's, it's good to draw inspiration from that. The caliber of performer celebrated here is impressive. But as AKA's hits begin to cross over to pop, he's getting more airplay at home than even Taylor Swift or Rihanna. Ah, amazing. My figure's are low. <laughs> this is so awesome. It's really, really cool, wow. man. I think it's really cool that they put this exhibition together. Yeah. You know, um, Every year, you know, this category is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until, uh, you know, like Mafigi Zolo here in the Grammy Museum, um, hopefully we can have an African category. Now, you've been part of the BETs for two years running now. Have you noticed any changes? I think people are taking things a bit more serious on both sides, from the organizers um, to the artists. Uh, you know, if you look at this exhibition, for instance, they've got, uh, you know, outfits and memorabilia from all sorts of artists uh, mm. of, you know, African uh, music history, uh, past, present, and future. I really think that people around the world are recognizing the importance and the growth and, and the potential of where we're going to be in the next five to 10 years. And being in a museum, I have to ask you, you know, uh, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? What do you want to be remembered for? I just want people to uh, listen to my music and understand that I was somebody who made people happy, mm. made people dance, made people think, um, made people think about themselves and their own self-worth and, and uplift, you know, really the mindset of African people, South African people, to, to understand how powerful we actually are, um, the commodity and the, the importance of our culture, of our heritage, of our language, of our cool, you know, we, yeah. we, we really are the, the, the genesis of the world. To be a king of pop or any genre requires social media skills and numbers. With a million plus followers on Twitter, he's right up there. So here's my surprise, the uh -huh. Michael Jackson stand. I had to bring you here. Amazing. I know you love him. Yeah. He wore this jacket 1997, it says here, yeah. during a trip to South Africa. Oh, that's when uh, he probably met uh, Madiba. Yeah. Yeah. But what do you love about the king of pop? Well, you know, firstly, just looking at these outfits, you know, this is something that like, if Michael Jackson was still alive, yeah. you know, he'd probably get like Balmain to make these jackets. And I actually think that's, you know, where they're getting the inspiration from, if you look at it. Yeah. You know, he just took style and performance and videos to a whole nother level. You know, he didn't have like a manual. You know, he kind of invented MTV or invented the art of music videos. You know, he's a pioneer, he's a legend. The styles of music earn Grammy recognition by popularity and a new category might be on the cards. Wow. Oh my. Amazing. This is incredible. So much history in this museum. Also, these are like the different Grammys through the years. And that's the one that everybody has right Jesus. now. Oh, 88 is probably like Michael Jackson's Grammy. Yeah? Yeah. Now, I feel you're one step away from a Grammy, right? Yeah. Which category would you want to take <laughs> if you were to win a Grammy? Well, uh, you know, I was speaking to somebody from the museum and I was asking them if they have an African category. Yeah. And uh, with the growth of African music, I don't think it's long before mm. they dedicate a specific category for African artists, or African musicians. All right, and you'll be the first person to take Hopefully, I can be the first person to take that one. Well, we'll be crossing fingers. Aren't you hungry? Yes, I actually am. I LA. I want to take you to the most amazing restaurant mm -hmm. for some tacos. Is this a date? No, it's just a, just tacos. You want some tacos? Yeah, let's All right, let's do that. <laughs>
<laughs> Along with its reputation, Chica's Tacos caught Bonang's attention with the words authentic, organic, non-GMO, free range and never frozen. As with an artist's music, it's hard to get your taco noticed amongst all the competition in a city of 18 million people. But offer a fresh take on a popular favorite, be bold enough to dare the public into trying something new, and they might go with you. Amazing. I have to take my... <laughs> your grill out. I have to take my grill out. Anyway, I got us these matching Chica's Tacos caps. I love it. I don't usually wear caps, but this is cute. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do I look good? Yeah, you definitely look cute. They're nice. So I think um, I, we can officially call it a date. So it's our first date? <laughs> yeah. It's a date. Yeah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back to the interview. Now let's talk about Los Angeles, the people, the vibe. Why do you love it so much here? Well, you know, I've come to Los Angeles a couple of times now. I think it's my fifth time in, in Los Angeles. And obviously every time I come here, you know, the surroundings get more familiar. Mm. You know, you make more friends, you, you make more connections. And it's really, really a, a great city, man. It's so vast. There's so many things to do, whether you want to shop or you want to party. Uh, you know, we have this joke around my friends. It's like we're inside the TV, you know, <laughs> like inside the TV box. It's, it's really a great vibe. It's got a, you know, different places kind of look like Cape Town. Some yeah. places look like Durban, yeah. you know, in a very like American way. So it's a really cool city. Do you get any downtime? It seems like you're always working. What do you do for fun? I'm with my girlfriend, you know, yeah. at the house, you know, just kick it. I work on my music and, um, you know, I, 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 I don't feel like music is work. You know, when you love what you do, it never really feels like work. Thank you. Cheers to LA. Cheers. Yeah. Back in the RSA, AKA invited us on set for the filming of his latest hit, One Time. You're a guy with some serious rag. Boogie, you're about to hook him up. Uh, the video is like the setup before you go to the club. We're gonna see him like driving to the club and then the big reveal where he'll be in the amazing suit. We also pull some streetwear stuff for him, which I absolutely love. I mean, Keenan has to have the best of everything. Like the jacket alone costs 11,000 rand. And I don't think I've seen anybody actually wear it. So it's gonna be great to see Keenan be one of the first people to wear this very, very expensive jacket. Yeah, Boogie really knows her stuff. She's one of the biggest and best stylists. And uh, you know, we have to get the best. So that's what we've done. Along with a cast of models, the video also features Dales, who's currently enjoying success with his own Sama-nominated album. You and AK are like brothers, inseparable. Why is that bond so important? Uh, you know, we like-minded. We pay attention to detail. We've been on records together. We've been on tours together, you know. He's my daughter's godfather. I'm his daughter's godfather. It's, it's just like, you know, we, we, we bros like that, you know what I mean? So I, I guess that's pretty much why. And because I'm all the way up. Do you feel that you have a responsibility as an artist who's achieved so much success to be able to inspire and change lives? I think I already have inspired and changed lives for the better. You know, music is a, is a spiritual thing. To have the power to change somebody's mood, to take them from sad to happy, or to make them dance, or to make them dream, or to inspire them, or to make them think. Uh, that is already a gift, uh, you know, that, that I think I've been given. And, uh, you know, it's a spiritual thing. You, you impact people's lives already. With regards to giving back, I think maybe I can do more. Uh, you know, we've created a scholarship for people to gain a diploma in, uh, you know, sound engineering. If they want to study animation, all that stuff. So we're trying by all means to give back on a ground level but also give back in terms of the music, of our culture, of our stories. One Time is on A-list playlisting on BBC One Extra in the UK. Wait till the video drops.